I am fascinated by the coaching carousel, and I love to watch coaches rise and fall in the college football ranks. Today's video will be the first in the start of a new series where I talk about the rise and fall of coaches, summarize their careers, and what went wrong when they finally got their big break. We're going to start the series with one of my favorite coaches of all time, Al Golden. He was supposed to be the savior of Miami football, but that didn't exactly happen. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 3k subscribers by the end of July. Smash that like button, turn on post notifications, and drop what coach I should do next. Now let's get started with the rise and fall of Al Golden. Believe it or not, Golden's playing career started at Penn State where he was his tight end under legendary head coach Joe Paterno. While there, he was a three-time letterman, helped lead them to the Fiesta Bowl, and won the Ridge Riley Award an award given to a player who displays excellence in sportsmanship, leadership, friendship, and scholarship. He was named a captain his senior year and went down as a fan favorite. From there, he spent one season as a tight end for the New England Patriots, but he was only there for the 1992 season. After one season in the NFL, he decided to join the coaching world, and his first step was to join the staff at Red Bank Catholic High School back in New Jersey. After one year there, he spent two years as a graduate assistant at Virginia, where he worked with linebackers and special teams. From there, he spent two years at Boston College before he returned to his alma mater and coached linebackers at Penn State. After that, he returned back to Virginia to take the defensive coordinator duties, and he was really good. Because of his success, he was named the head coach at Temple in 2005, and he was the second youngest head coach in the country behind Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. Temple football was in an absolutely horrible spot, as they had gone 3-31 and their last three years and they were so bad that they were kicked out of the Big East and sent to the MAC. I honestly had no idea Temple football was that bad because now Temple's consistently pretty good, but Al was the man to turn things around. Things didn't exactly go perfect though during his first three years. The Owls went 1-11 in 2006, 4-8 in 2007, and 5-7 in 2008, which was the best record since 1990. Going into the 2009 season, Golden was headed to his fourth year at the program and needed an up-and-coming offensive coordinator by the name of Matt Rule. Led by star running back Bernard Pierce, the Owls ended up going 9-3 and, and won the MAC East Division along the way. They played UCLA in the Eagle Bank Bowl, and after leading for three quarters, they blew their lead and lost. After the season, Golden was interviewed for the Cincinnati job, the Tennessee job, and the UCLA job, but he decided to sign an extension through the 2014 season with the Owls. He led them to an 8-4 record in 2010, and had an up-and-coming star Rod Streeter on the team. After the year, Golden was a hot commodity and took the Miami job to restore the program. Going into the 2011 season, the Hurricanes had a ton of talent as they returned quarterback Ja'Cory Harris, running backs Lamar Miller and Mike James, plus wide receivers Alan Hearns, Travis Benjamin, and Philip Dorsett. Unfortunately, the Canes would have to open up the season without seven starters as the team was hit with suspensions following an NCAA investigation. Their first game was on the road against Maryland, and Al Golden lost his first game at the helm. With most kids coming back the next week, the Canes were set up for a huge game against Ohio State. In his first career home game, he won and they upset the Buckeyes. The problem was consistency though, as they would win a game, then lose a game, and then win another one. Besides the Ohio State win, the Canes' biggest win of the year was at home against number 22 Georgia Tech. The Canes finished the season at 6-6, six six, but they very well could have gone undefeated. All six losses came by less than one possession, and they found themselves unable to win a lot of those close games. Because of their NCAA issues, the Hurricanes weren't allowed to play in a bowl game. But for what Golden was handed, he did a really good job in his first year, as Stephen Morris was now the quarterback. Mike James and Duke Johnson were the running backs, and Philip Dorsett and Rashawn Scott were the two best wideouts. They began the year with a win over Boston College, but they fell to Kansas State for the second straight year. From there, they won the next three games over Bethune-Cookman, Georgia Tech, and NC State, and climbed all the way up to 4-1. But right when things began to look up, they got killed by Notre Dame and lost to both North Carolina and Florida State to continue their three-game losing streak. They did finish the year 3-1 though, and ended up going 7-5. Once again, Golden couldn't prove his worth in a bowl game though because of a self-imposed postseason ban. Just like last year, the majority of their losses came by way of a close game, so it seemed they couldn't put it all together at the end of games. Despite that narrative, Miami was still winning games and trending up, so everything was fine for now. Going into the 2013 season, the Canes were once again led by Morris, Duke Johnson became the main back, and Alan Hearns blossomed into a star. The 2013 season finally looked like it was going to be a big year, and it definitely started out that way. They began the season with a huge win over number 12 Florida, and then followed that up with wins over USF, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, and Wake Forest, 
and the Canes jumped all the way up to number 7 in the country before a huge primetime matchup against Florida State. College game day came to Tallahassee, and the winner would stay in the national title hunt. Unfortunately, Miami just wasn't ready for this moment, as they got blown out by Jameis Winston and the Knowles. From there, they lost to Virginia Tech, and the following week they lost to Duke in a battle for the ACC Coastal Division. Miami won their games against Virginia and Pitt, but they lost to Duke and that put them in second place. The Blue Devils had one of their best years in school history, and I remember being really happy for them at the time. The Hurricanes ended up beating Teddy Bridgewater and the number 18 Louisville Cardinals in the Russell Athletic Bowl and finished the year with a 9-4 record. This time the team won 9 games, and Golden got to prove his worth in the bowl game. But they did get blown out in all 4 of their losses, and they started losing right when things mattered most. I can't really find if he was on the hot seat after the 2013 season, but people were wondering if Golden was going to take the Canes to the next level. Going into year 4, expectations were really high for both Golden and the program. He had a team full of his kids, and they had improved each of the previous 3 years. The team was ultra talented, as they went on to have 7 kids drafted in the NFL, but they were going to have to find a new quarterback after Stephen Morris finally graduated. The battle came down to true freshman Brad Kaya and Jake Heaps, and the true freshman won the job. Kaya was the quarterback, Duke Johnson was the running back, and Philip Dorsett became the wide receiver star. The Canes were picked to win the ACC Coastal Division, and some thought they could even do better than that. Sadly, that dream was over after week one, as they lost to Louisville in blowout fashion. They beat up on Florida A&M and Arkansas State in their next two games, but they lost on the road to number 24 Nebraska. The Canes were 2-2, two and, two and desperately needed for something to turn around the season. They bounced back with a win over Duke the following week, but then fell to the eventual Coastal winner Georgia Tech in their next game. From there, they beat Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina to climb back to 6-3, and, and they were saving their season. I wish I could say they continued that streak, but they didn't. They fell hard. They played number 2 Florida State in an absolute thriller, but once again lost in heartbreaking fashion. They then lost to Virginia and Pitt to end the season, and they finished with a 6-6 six six record. They got to play in the Independence Bowl versus South Carolina, and they lost a close game to the Gamecocks. Miami finished the year 6-7, and, and this would really heat up the seat for Al Golden. The team had 7 players drafted, and clearly it, it wasn't a lack of talent. Plus, the Coastal Division was very weak that year, so 6 wins was kind of embarrassing. Nevertheless, he was given one more year. Going into the 2015 season, Kaya was back at quarterback, Joseph Yerby was the running back, and Stacey Coley, Rashawn Scott, and Herb Waters were the impact wide receivers. They began the year with wins over Bethune-Cookman and Florida Atlantic before a critical game against Nebraska. They beat the Huskers in a really good game, and then had a road game versus Cincinnati. They lost to the Bearcats, and the Fire Golden Chance began. Miami fans called for his immediate firing, and even Florida State fans started a GoFundMe to keep him around. Once again, Miami lost a close game to Florida State the following week, which seemed to be the narrative of Golden's tenure, but the Clemson game was the last straw. The Hurricanes lost 58 to nothing to the Tigers, and that was it for Al. It was the biggest loss in school history, and Miami fans had enough of it. He was fired that weekend, and Larry Scott was named the interim head coach. Their fortune immediately changed, and Miami finished the regular season at 8 and 4. They lost in the Sun Bowl to Washington State, but the season was saved, and it wasn't by Golden. Al spent the rest of the 2015 season with family in New Jersey before he returned to the coaching ranks. In 2016, he joined the Detroit Lions as the tight ends coach, and he was in that position for one year. Eventually, he became the team's linebackers coach, and he was on the staff until 2019 before he was fired. Recently, Al was given another coaching chance as he is now the linebackers coach for the Cincinnati Bengals going into the 2020 NFL season. Golden has found his place in the NFL, but why exactly did he ultimately fail at Miami? Let's figure that out. Well, Al clearly had a ton of talent while he was at Miami, and I guess he just didn't know how to use it. He took some teams at Temple that weren't talented at all and made them good, but doing it at a premier school is a much different monster. Golden could never seemingly win those big games, and those heartbreaking losses to their rival Florida State definitely did not help things. The Canes lost 14 games by double-digit points while he was there, the team never seemingly put things together at the end of games, and he also suffered the worst loss in school history to Clemson, a team who had nearly identical recruiting rankings at the time. Finally, in five years, the Canes never took that next step, and the brand image of the U had become stained under his name. Based off his results, I agree with Miami's decision to fire him, but besides one year under Mark Richt, the Canes haven't been legitimate title contenders, and they're now trying to establish a new identity under Manny Diaz. Overall, Al Golden was a really solid football coach, and he should have a statue of him built at Temple for what he helped establish and build there, but he's never going to be a guy to lead a team to a national title, conference championship games, which is what he was brought in to do at Miami. Golden's team had some of my favorite players such as Brad Kaya and Duke Johnson, 
and I hope Miami football gets back to being good sometime soon. If you are a Hurricanes fan, let me know in the comment section what you think about the Al Golden era and why you personally think he got fired. I also want to know what other coaches I should do next, so be sure to drop that suggestion in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to smash that like button. I know Al Golden would want you to. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and help me reach 3k subscribers by the end of July, and check out my video about why I think Jim Harbaugh is the most overrated coach in college football. I hope to do more videos like this, and until next time, peace.